Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this is going to be a video about the optical uh, phenomenon or optical uh, effect known as visual occultation. Okay, so here we have the height of the Empire States Building in, in Manhattan. It's to the tip, it's 443 meters, right? Um, and then for the One World Trade Center to the tip, it's 546 meters, okay? So the distance between these two buildings in Manhattan is approximately four miles, right? So this may show up and it does. So you can see there, uh, let's see if I can make that bigger. All right. All right, I don't want any answers. So here you can see the buildings. Obviously, this is it in the background. Here is the Empire State Building, one more trade center in the background. Right, you get the, there you are again, you get the, let me see if you have a bigger one, no. Uh, but you get the gist, right? That's what's going on. <clears throat> now, the reason that um, this one in the background looks smaller, as we all know, is because of perspective. It's not that it is smaller, it just looks that way, due to perspective. Um, something that doesn't exist, uh, within uh, the globe and heliocentrism paradigm. There is no, well, they try and use perspective for the sky when it comes to things like the sun and different things and trying to formulate fraudulent distances to things like the sun and the moon. Um, but they, in, ter in when it comes to terrestrial terms, they do not um, in, insert in any way or account for perspective. Here is Metabunk, right? Here is the distance between uh, of 6.437 kilometers, right, viewer height uh, in meters of two feet. And the geometric uh, drop will be 3.25 meters and a hidden of 0.15 meters. Like there's no perspective being accounted for whatsoever there. It's purely an or orthographic drop calculator. That's all it is, right, from the horizontal, just in case you want to know. Okay, so if we take the full height of the Empire States Building, we have a uh, twelve point six four degrees, right? When we add it at a distance of two kilometers, so at two kilometers um, away from the Empire States Building, its angular size will be six point, or sorry, twelve point six four degrees. At if we take in that two kilometers and another six kilometers, six point four three seven kilometers, because that's what four miles is in in kilometers, and we add that. To it, it's going to be 8.437 kilometers between that observer and the One World Trade Center, right? And that has an angular size of 3.764 degrees. So <clears throat> that means it's about like you're talking basically about a third, right, of its of the angular size. So someone standing two someone standing um, two two kilometers away from the Emperor State's building. Um, to someone standing two kilometers away from the Empire States Building will see the Empire States Building as being having an angular size of twelve, just over twelve uh, degrees, and uh, they will see the One World Trade Center as having an angular size of just over three degrees. Right now, none of this can happen on a globe. None of this, right? There is none of these maths included within globe Earth maths. Now we all know that, but for new people that may be watching this who may not realize that. No perspective effect is accounted for in global maths. It's a complete hijacking of perspective and other things, but they hijack the hell out of perspective when they're trying to show and formulate things orthographically. But <clears throat> to show what I'm going to talk about here, it will involve angular size change, but what I'm focusing on is not angular size change as much, although it is part of it. It's because I'm going to be showing it orthographically. It's a visual occultation. So, Let's just say, right, here we have a person here at standing at, at G, right? Here is a building, right, here, right? I just zoom in so you can see it. Here is a building, right, that's much smaller than this other building here, right? But due to this building, right, being partway between the observer and the big building, they're only seeing this much of the big building. Well, now, technically, if I just get a segment just for a second... Uh, technically, right, they should see a little bit more than that, right, above that. So, technically, if, a, technically, 
according to Globert, right? Because they think everything is totally linear on a flat plane, as in, as in we should, they think, they think stupid stuff. Like we should be able to see everything like without perspective or something, you know, how come we can't see Tokyo from New York? You know, this kind of stupid stuff. It's like, right, because perspective exists. That's one of the reasons, you know, they're asking us this stupid nonsense for years. But that's basically because they have this idea in their head that they can't understand it because perspective doesn't exist in their in their world, yet they know it exists in reality. They then want to somehow come up with a straw man about how perspective and ask us stupid questions like, how come we can't see, you know, Paris from New York? You know, this kind of stupid nonsense, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but the point being is that for this observer, right, technically this much of the building here is above this building. But the observer can't see it because their angle of view is skewed by, um, by the fact that they have to look over this smaller building. Okay? So that means that they're only seeing this much of the top of the big building. So from their point of view, the big building is at the f dipping down or sinking down below the smaller building. Now, you could then come up with some crazy idea and start calling that earth curve. The earth must be curving underneath these buildings, and that's why this small, bigger building is down so low. You could come up with mats, right, that would support that. But it's purely visual occultation. It's purely a case of your, that the observer's view is being blocked by a smaller building in the foreground, but that smaller building is h higher than they are. So an object that's of equal height, right, or higher than the oil line will cause this effect. Now, let's bring in another building into the mix, right? Now, a bigger building than this one again, right? Um, and let's bring in a vector of view, right? Now, at this point, the observer can't see, right? Can't see uh, um, anything below this blue line of this other building here. So all we did was put a, a second building in, right? So before this building was put in, right? Before that building was put in, the observer could see, right, from here, up to, from this black line up to this red line, right, of this bigger building here, right? When we put this other building in, right, now the observer can only see from the blue line up to the red line of that building. Now, does that mean, what does that mean? Does that mean that it's gone further over the curve of the globe out because this building is here? Because if we remove that building, they can see this much of it. But if we insert that building, then the observer can only see this much. So an observer here, in a situation where they have this building here, right, right, and this building here, in the way of them seeing this building, right, what would happen is, from their point of view, they're only seeing this much here of this second building, right, this small bit here of the second building, and due to the second building, they're only seeing the top spire as well of this third building. So from their point of view, right, if they were, you know, crazy, you know, or just stupid, they could start thinking, oh, that the the earth must be a big globe and that these two buildings have gone over the curve of it. <laughs> right? I seem hard to say that without laughing. Right. That's what they could say. So that's visual occultation. Right? It can you could park a van in front of an observer here, right? And that observer would be blocked, their view would be blocked by the van, right, of this building here. Like if I move, right, the move it to the observer closer, right, as you can see, if I move the observer closer, then they won't see, if I move them to there, they won't see any of this big building or the second building. If I move them back a little bit, right, right, if I move them back a little bit, they will see. Not, none of it as well, only the very tip of it maybe, back again to here, they would see only a very small amount of the tip of it, right? Um, but they won't be able to see the amount that is actually there, right? If we're moving back again to here, sorry, right? 
then when they go back, they can see more of the building. Right? So is this our core of our perspective? Well, it's purely perspective, as obviously they have a flat plane here underneath the buildings. Okay? So this is something that's used constantly um, and called our core and has been for a long time. When it's just visual occultation. I showed this many times. I've showed this uh, many times as um, a, as a demonstration. I made my own little video demonstration of it and I showed it many times. I'm not going to show it in this video because I've shown it in the past. Because I don't need to. You can see what's going on. But one of the places it was used was Blackpool. That's visual occultation. That's the cause of that. That's all it is. Now I've shown what that is in more detail in videos in the past. The Blackpool observation. Uh, of the mountains in the background with Blackpool Tower, but that's what it is. It's it's visual occultation, because from the observer's point of view, right? Uh, this uh, they're only she seeing. Sorry if we take out the the middle one here again, with just the smaller one here. They're only seeing this much of the bigger building. So in from their point of view, it must be gone over a curve or sank down into the ground, right? When none of those things happened, it's purely purely uh, perspective, right? And <clears throat> if we're bringing a, something in between it here, then th with that there, they're not only seeing this much of it. So if we, if someone did maths on this situation, right, and with the consideration that there must be a globe and this building is going down over the curve of it, right, uh, but then someone built this building in between those two buildings, then they'd have to change their maths, wouldn't they? <laughs> because the, the, obviously the original maths were wrong, so if they needed to believe they were on a globe again, crazily, then they'd have to change them around again, and the, the maths of their globe would have to change, because now they're not seen from the black line up to the red line, they're only seen from the blue line up to the red line. So their maths have to change immediately, or because what? Because someone built a building, right? So let's move it to a different observation, but the same thing, right? Something like Mount Canigo, right? Here we have a small hill or mountain here, right? Here we have Mount Canigo, or a bigger one, right? It doesn't have to be Mount Canigo, but a bigger one in the distance. This can be ocean between them, right? And here we have a smaller mountain or hill in front of the bigger mountain, but one that's bigger than the mountain or hill the person is standing on, right? So... <clears throat> One of the people we all know, you all know who I'm talking about, I'm not going to name names here, pushes this Mount Canigou thing for the globe all the time, right? And I'm after asking the person, right, more than one time, what height are the hills and mountains in the front of Canigou? Before, you know, before, um, before Canigou, what's in between the observer and the mountain? And the person's not interested in going into that. They don't want that. I wonder why. This is why. Because... If someone's standing on this hill here, or this mountain here, right, and they're looking at this mountain, right, they're only, if this one, has, this other hill here is in the way, they're only going to see between the orange and the blue line. That's going to be the maximum view they have of that mountain. Now, let's make this mountain a bit bigger, right, and we'll bring this up a bit, right. Now, they're going to see more of it because that's bigger, but this is still in the way. If we make this a little bigger as well, suddenly they're seeing less of it, right? So is this mountain going over the curve of a globe out or is it purely perspective? It <clears throat> Specifically, the effect of visual occultation. Because it's funny that the person, we all know who it is, not going to name names, the f it's funny that the person on the globe side, who keeps pushing this canigo nonsense, right? Keeps on not wanting to address the hills and mountains in the front of it. Just like so many other globe observations over the years, they don't want to deal with what's in front of it. Because the same was true for um, the Mount San Jacinto observation from 150 foot high in, in Point Hume in Malibu by, uh, what's his name, Jay Tolan, many years ago, right? Los Angeles was 100 feet higher than that. Los Angeles is, is, was 200, the direction he was looking towards Mount, uh, Mount San Jacinto had Los Angeles 100 foot higher than him. So, and the hills in front of Mount San Jacinto were higher than he was. 
So people were wondering, how come he's only seen the very top of Mount San Jacinto? Because of this effect. So it's either, one, it's either that it's gone over a globe and perspective doesn't exist, and this perspective effect doesn't exist. If you want to test to see if this perspective effect does exist, just stand near a high object and get someone to drive a van in, in front of you, right, where it's close enough to you, so you have to I look at the angle. So you're well, just in front of you, so you're looking at the angle. Uh, above the van, you have to angle your eyes above the top of the van. Doesn't matter, and you will see that when the van is not there, right? Make sure you can see all of the object from the bottom to the top, and drive in a van and see then how much of the, of the object can you see, and is it equal to the height of the van? So subtract it from it, and you will find it's not. So it's either this effect doesn't exist and is not real, or Earth curve exists. That's the options. So it's up to yourselves. Take take whichever option <laughs> suits you best. I know what I'm going with. I'm going with the winning option. Thanks for watching.